uh, karma and uh, its effects are uh, uh, are given uh, uh, quite detailed in the you know uh, jewel ornament of liberation uh, of Gampapa. Uh, and uh, uh, I was uh, uh, I find this uh, I don't know whether it's not a really new translation but uh, a revised translation of Ken. Uh, called Ornament of Precious Liberation. Uh, and uh, uh, I find this uh, uh, quite uh, uh, easy, more easy to understand. Uh, so therefore, I was a little bit looking at this and maybe I don't think we will go through that, but uh, we will refer to this uh, kind of uh, again and again. Uh, as you know, uh, karma is very important uh, from the Buddhist point of view uh, because uh, uh, from Buddhist point of view, uh, how we, how we, you know, how we fare, how we, uh, how things happen with us, uh, is not uh, because of the will of a, a kind of a. Uh, almighty being or something like that, but our own karma. And uh, uh, the karma is, uh, uh, is another uh, facet of uh, interdependence, you know, dependent origination, that uh, everything is not, you know, interrelated and causes and and conditions and the causes and effects. Uh, things happens according to whatever kind of causes and conditions happens, uh, not just because somebody wants it or somebody wills it or, you know, is made by somebody or anything like that. Uh, so therefore, you know, uh, from Buddhist point of view, uh, understanding of karma is extremely important and especially the practice of dharma has a lot to do with the understanding of karma because if you don't understand the karma, then, you know, uh, we don't really uh, have, there's no way of practicing uh, the dharma. Uh, this is usually, it is said like this, and this is, I think, important. Uh, the, uh, uh, this is uh, in this, th there is this, uh, quotation uh, the worlds have been made by actions this manifestation is due to actions or the karma senses being have been created by the actions have strung from actions or strung from karma through actions arise all different types. Uh, so the karma, there are two things. It says uh, 
Sambili and Sam, Sambili and Sambili. Uh, the action, uh, probably you can say mental activity and then activity set in motion by thought. That's how it is translated here. And I think it's Sambili is mental activity, and then Sambili is activity set in motion by thought. Uh, the first is, you know, our own thoughts, or, you know, thought here is not just thoughts, it's emotions also, you know. When we say Semba or Samba, it, it always includes emotions, you know. So something that arises in our, you know, uh, our, our mind, some uh, positive or negative thoughts or emotions or whatever, uh, sometimes we call it arising uh, because it's not just thoughts because thoughts is just, you know, uh, and emotion, uh, this is, you know, anything that arises in us, uh, that is also karma, that is also karma. That's also creating karma. But then uh, that thoughts and emotions which arises in our mind, then turns into action. Uh, say like if I, you know, if um, a negative thought arises, then it will turn, you know, if we don't do anything or if we don't control it, then a negative action will happen. Like uh, we say something that is hurtful or we do something that is harmful, uh, then it becomes, you know, uh, a full action or uh, some building. So therefore, you know, both are karma, both are action. Now, I think here uh, we need to understand karma in two ways. The first is, you know, the karma is actually activity. Karma is an action. Karma means activity or action. So whether it's a mental or, you know, emotional activity or it's a, you know, uh, uh, actual kind of verbal and um, physical uh, activity uh, inspired by our mental activity, uh, both as uh, is karma. Uh, so therefore, you know, sometimes people think that you, when you do something, only unless you do something, it is not karma. That's not, you know, uh, if you feel very strongly, very negative or positive emotions, or, you know, uh, thoughts, you can say, uh, that also is karma, that's creating karma. Uh, positive, negative, so whatever goes on in our thoughts and emotions and, you know, uh, because these are creating uh, the way we are, our characteristic, our way of being, our way of seeing, our, you know, so therefore this is, this is karma. It doesn't necessarily have to be acted out. But when it is acted out, then it becomes even more stronger because it's kind of a, you know, it becomes more solid, it becomes more gross, you know, that's... Generally, you know, many people think, you know, or when you say karma, uh, Sometimes many people or many times we, we think about the results of that actions. You know, this is my karma or this is his karma or that's good karma or bad karma and things like that. Uh, that, is, that is, we are talking about the, the result of that karma. Uh, so, you know, so in a way, uh, when we talk about karma, uh, we can 
we can include both the, the actions or activities of the mind and speech and body or and what you know uh, what effects or what results uh, comes out of that uh, so this also is referred to as karma so therefore uh, you know we need to understand this very clearly that both are karma they are kind of uh, you know sometimes we refer to the the result more as a karma but both are the karma and uh, of course uh, the act action itself uh, is very important because that's where you know we have to be uh, we have to be more aware of and we have to be more uh, you know uh, mindful about because you know uh, when the result has arrived then you know uh, that's done you know that's the result so you know then we just have to go through that uh, but the importance is uh, the the when we are actually our actions itself because that's when we can actually decide or we can change or we can uh, you know transform uh, and therefore the you know uh, that action activity itself either mental or emotional or uh, physical action is the time you know that's when we have to be very uh, aware and uh, what can you say uh, cautious and uh, things like that now first maybe we talk about the uh, these actions and then maybe we can talk about the results uh, these actions uh, whether it's a you know a mental activity uh, or uh, uh, physical activity that's that's kind of a, uh, created or you know uh, manufactured or inspired by our mental activity uh, whatever may be uh, you can kind of categorize it usually we get of course it is it's not one way you know this is very you know uh, it is um, it can be very uh, you know very many shades of uh, differences uh, you know it's not always uh, black and white that this is good and this is bad and just completely not like that but you know generally we you know you can categorize it into three uh, types of activities uh, one is what is called as migewa which is non virtuous gewa is virtuous or the you know positive uh, and migewa is you know you put uh, a negative on top of the gewa and then that becomes migewa means non virtuous actions non virtuous actions virtuous actions and there is a third one which is a little bit complicated to translate uh, here in this um, in the book uh, of uh, um, uh, ken uh, this is translated the action of unwavering karma uh, the tibetan word is mi yowa yowa is kind of a, um, what can you say moving or you know uh, uh, fluctuating and mi yowa is uh, kind of unwavering or unfluctuating stable kind of uh, it's 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 positive it's a positive it's certainly not you know non virtuous it's certainly not non non virtuous 
Uh, it's uh, generally virtuous, but it's not an not so much of an activity. Uh, you know, now uh, since uh, we understand more or less the virtuous and uh, you know, or the non-virtuous and virtuous activities. Uh, maybe a little bit explain what unwavering karma is. And that is, you know, uh, that is uh, like different, different types of uh, meditative stage, uh, you know, uh, the different stages of samadhis or things like that, which is not, uh, which doesn't have a complete kind of a wisdom, uh, but mind is completely calm and, uh, you know, uh, very, uh, very uh, stable, uh, but not, not completely, uh, you know, uh, free of the root, uh, has not been able to take, get rid of the uh, the um, the root of our, you know, uh, negative emo root of klesha. You know, I think this is something I need to mention. Uh, sometimes, you know. Uh, although this is another uh, thing which is not uh, too much described or too much discussed, uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, uh, something difficult to translate, but uh, we always talk in the in the you know dharma discussions uh, something called taji. Uh, that is the you know. The Tibetan word. Uh, if you try to uh, try to literally translate it, it means uh, very ta means like a, uh, very you know ta means like minute, very small, very uh, very um, uh, what can you say? Um, very um, um, almost invisible, you know, like uh, a tower, very, um, very minute. J means uh, can bloom, can blows, bloom, you know, kind of like can go off, can go big, something which is very, uh, very tiny and very, you know, uh, very small, but can go big. Uh, I don't know how to translate that. This is uh, uh, maybe somebody translated it before. I don't know. Now this means that you know what it means. I think that I will that we all have an unless you know that is our our what can you say ignorance or the basic uh, uh, you know. Uh, basic, uh, our wisdom is completely, uh, you know, awakened. Uh, we still have that touching, you know, all, everybody has that touching. Uh, even if I feel or you feel very kind, very compassionate, very, you know, uh, very um, calm and totally kind of without any negativity, unless we have taken, you know, cut the root of this, we still have taji, you know, uh, everybody has it. Uh, and uh, uh, that, uh, so therefore, you know, uh, now if, if we come across uh, uh, a situation uh, that is, you know, that creates us uh, 
negative emotions, negative you know, reaction. Uh, and then we, we react in a negative way, then that negative you know, uh, uh, kind of klesha uh, uh, arises. And then, you know, uh, in our mind first, and then if it can't, you know, do, if we don't, we don't do something about it, then it comes into action. So that's how the, you know, all the uh, non-virtuous actions uh, happen. Uh, in the same way, uh, you know, uh, if if this, uh, you know. Uh, uh, if we do not allow, or if somehow uh, only kind of uh, uh, positive, uh, you know, circumstances, uh, and we focus our mind on the cir positive circumstances and things like that, then we react with positively, and then this positive karma happens. Positive karma happens, and we can have lots of positive karma, but as long as that root thing, is not, uh, not, not destroyed or not eliminated. Uh, we cannot totally go beyond the samsaric state. Uh, we can go very high in the uh, in the samsaric state. Uh, so therefore, there is all sorts of you know uh, what we call the the God's realms. Uh, what we call God's realms, like. Uh, uh, desire God's realm is 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 not that is that is in a positive you know there is lots of activities, but what we call the form God's realm and form loss less God's realm. This is not like uh, uh, you know God's that's kind of dancing uh, in the gardens kind of uh, God's realm, but these are mental states. Uh, very, very calm, very clear, very good, very, you know, positive kind of thing. Uh, and that has many different stages. Uh, like uh, uh, in the forms realm, there are 17 stages, and then the formless in four stages. And these are very, of course, the, the difference is very subtle, so we can't say it very clearly, but, you know, so these are mostly this you know, the unwavering karma, you know, coming out of the in unwavering karma. Uh, but if there, at any stage, then a wisdom happens, or we are, or, you know, we can have the experience of our, you know, uh, true nature awakened, then immediately we, uh, we, we cross the samsaric stage. And then you know, different levels of enlightened stage happens. So that's the unwavering karma. So just just to you know give an introduction to that. Uh, so the you know we need to the the most important thing maybe unwavering karma is not something that we have to be too much uh, careful about or too much. If we can to meditate very well, it's very good. But that's why it is often said that, you know, the wisdom, the vipassana uh, becomes important because that's, you know, just the samatha uh, is not totally enough. The samatha and vipassana both is necessary to cut that root of the, you know, uh, glacier. That's the idea. Uh, now, then, then non-virtuous action. Very good, you can. Did you say something? So, so then you know uh, there is, of course, you know uh, the non-virtuous actions, like ten non-virtuous actions and then 10 virtuous actions and things like that, uh, which uh, I don't think I have to uh, say too much here because uh, I think most of you know about this. 
and uh, uh, and it is very clear in the books also uh, if you read them. Uh, what I want to uh, what I want to talk about uh, a little bit is that you know uh, the the result come uh, because uh, you know sometimes. Uh, when we talk about karma, mm, you know, it's seen as like um, uh, punishment and and reward. Uh, and uh, I think we 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 need to we need to very clearly understand uh, the difference between punishment and reward kind of way we think about. And then the cause and effect way, you know, uh, these two are, uh, are different. This, you know, and I think it's important to know the difference. Uh, when we talk about, you know, like uh, reward and punishment, then, you did an action, and then it is, you know, it is somebody judges it, or you know, it is, uh, you know, it it is seen as as punishable or something negative, and then uh, there's a there's a punishment for that. You know, there is a kind of for this action you have to get. 10 lashes or whatever, you know. Uh, and then if you did a positive thing, then you get a... The karma is not functioning exactly like that, you know. Uh, it is, it is, it's a cause and effect. It's cause and effect means like, uh, uh, you know, It's, it's a little bit different. It's very different. Uh, for instance, maybe I give you an example of myself. Uh, like uh, uh, when I arrived in Germany this time, first time, uh, in August, uh, some of my friends saw me and they got, they got a little bit shocked. Uh, because I was walking, uh, I was crooked, walking like a, not straight, but a little bit crooked and not very stable and on a walking stick <laughs> and said, oh, what happened? You know, you are so old and, you know, like uh, something must be done immediately kind of things. Uh, because for like two years, and not not just two years, like many many years, you know, for last many years, I I didn't do any walks, I didn't do any exercises. Uh, I was sitting and you know uh, either in the uh, on my bed or in my in the car uh, or in the you know uh, in the plane or like that uh, all the time. And then, you know, uh, I was not going out of my room, you know, uh, all the time. And uh, all my kind of, uh, and my, my back became so stiff that I could hardly bend down even to get into a car, you know. Uh, to get into the car, uh, I needed either a very high a car or I had to go in all four and kind of, you know, uh, like that. Now that, you know, that's my karma, you know, I did that. It's not in it's not in a punishment by anybody, just because of my own inaction and things like that. And then I became like that. Now when I came here, and then some people said, No, you have to do this, you have to do that. And you know, uh, I had uh, like uh, two weeks of massages and physiotherapy and, you know, a little bit of walking and things like that. And 
I started to change a little bit, you know. Uh, I started to walk a little bit, a uh, little bit more and more, and then I started to become a little bit, uh, you know, easier to walk, become a little bit straighter. Uh, and, you know, uh, before I, I, I even to go from like uh, 100 meters, uh, I had to maybe a little bit rest. But then I could go a little bit, you know, like uh, half an hour without resting and things like that. So it changed, yeah. And now I'm much better. I do, like I'm walking almost every day, a little bit at least. Uh, now, that's kind of karma, you know. It's the, it's, you know, it's nobody punishes me and nobody rewards me, but my actions have its results. And that result is because of that particular, you know, if I do in a certain way, it will happen this way. If I do in a certain way, it happens like that, you know, and it can, it can change, you know. It doesn't have to be like, um, I have to get all the punishment before, and then, you know, I have to get the good result. It's nothing like that. It's just, you know, the causes and conditions, it can change. And so therefore, from Buddhist point of view, you know, it is said again and again, that it's, it could be actually very easy to, to, to purify the karma. Because in order to get purification of the karma, it's not that you have to first get all the results and suffer all the results of all your negative deeds and then only uh, purify it. If you have to do that, you will never ever become enlightened. You will never ever be able to get fully because you have so many you know, negative karma that, you know, it, it would take like millions of lifetimes to get totally rid of that. But that's not the way, you know. Uh, you can, because uh, that's why it is, you know, it is often said that uh, if you do in a, you know, sometimes a very small positive karma can have a very big result, positive result. And sometimes, a very small negative karma or action can also have a very big uh, negative action uh, or negative result, you know. Uh, so therefore, these are all, you know, uh, uh, kind of, uh, I think if we understand this, the, the difference between um, the, the um, what you call the punishment and reward, and cause and effect, then I think we understand uh, without any problem the, the karma and its effects. Uh, so this is something I thought uh, I need to mention here uh, because that makes the difference. You know, that is a big difference actually, it's completely different. Uh, so therefore any, you know, any negative karma you do, uh, you know, it can be transformed. Like, you know, uh, the Buddhism is all about transforming negative karma. You know, there's this, you know, in sitting it says, um, uh, uh, I don't know how to translate it. Uh, uh, you know, somebody who became, uh, who became um, uh, unmindful, you know, who became careless, uh, and later became more careful or more mindful, uh, can purify or can uh, become purified like a moon without clouds, you know, uh, and completely, you know, restored in a positive. Like, you know, uh, he says, Gao, uh, Sonting, Tonde, Deji. These are the, you know, 
the Nanda, uh, Angulimala, uh, and there are two others also. You know, they were like Angulimala, you know the story, you know, a very angry person, very negative person, you know, uh, who actually killed uh, 999 innocent people uh, and made, you know, a kind of a, 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 a long, what call it, the uh, rosary of uh, uh, their little fingers uh, and things like that. Uh, he, at the end, but the, and he was so, so strong and so powerful that nobody could, even the king's army could not control him. And then Buddha met him and then he discussed and he tried, you know, he, he kind of converted him in a way, or he, he, he could convince him that what he was doing was wrong. And there is, you know, and then he, he changed and he, you know, he became a monk and then he practiced. And when he practiced, he actually became an arhat, uh, you know. So doing, even after having committed so much negative actions and negative karma, uh, he could actually completely get purified and become an arhat. Uh, in the same way, you know, whether it's, it's through, you know, somebody who has lots of, uh, you know, uh, hatred, lots of attachment, lots of ignorance and all kinds of different things <laughs> you can be, you know, you can uh, purify and become uh, totally enlightened and, you know, like that. So that is the, you know, the, the whole point that it is possible to, uh, you know, uh, to purify everything and purify not in a kind of, you have to go through like lives and a lifetime of hellrum and you know all kind of things and then only you know after many many kind of lifetimes and centuries uh, you purify not like that you know it depends on how how strongly you are uh, you know working on your negative you know uh, karma and causes and conditions and uh, how strongly you are uh, you are developing or increasing your positive, uh, you know, state of mind and positive, uh, you know, uh, emotions and positive state, you know, especially wisdom and compassion and things like that, then you can, you know, you can get rid of all the negative karma in a very short time as well, you know. And, and, and not you know, not going through, you don't have to, I mean, this is also, there's two things there. Unless you do that, unless you purify the karma, and unless you get your kind of, you know, uh, what can you say, uh, you, you destroy the root of negative action, that is the mind poisons, clashes, then every karma you do, has its action, reaction, and it will happen, and it cannot be, it cannot be kind of, a, if there is a cause, there will be result, you know, there will be, it cannot be, you know, there is no kind of, you know, uh, because I prayed uh, to Buddha, so you will be excused, there's nothing like that. But if you can cut the root of this, you know, like negative, uh, you know, glaciers, then your karma is, uh, karma doesn't have any, uh, any, any ground to, to stick to. Uh, so therefore, if you see, uh, you know, your true nature, the emptiness nature of yourself, or, you know, selflessness nature of yourself, uh, then uh, all the karmic kind of, uh, there's nothing to hold on to. So they, it's, it's a, you know, it's completely purified. And so this is, I think, very important from the, uh, from, I think, from a, a Buddhist point of view. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if I need to uh, mention 
about the, you know, generally we talk about, you know, uh, how the karmic kind of causes and conditions happen, you know. Uh, I think we, you know that maybe, uh, you know, the, that kind of three, uh, Um, the um, This three uh, is something I think uh, this three is um, it's difficult to translation. It's very difficult to translate uh, the here it is translated as the ripened result the result corresponding to the cause and the dominant result. Uh, I don't know if that, uh, that makes any sense, but you know, uh, uh, the, the ripened result is like, if you do something really negative, you know, really, really negative, uh, then, like you will be born into hell being or something like that. That's called the, you know, ripened result. And that, uh, that, that negative karma, you have done very much, very strong, very negative. And then all these kind of uh, causes and conditions come together, then that result comes. So like that. But then, the results corresponding to the cause is that after that kind of that karma of being born in the hell realm is finished. And even if you are reborn as a human being, uh, you still have some effect of that, you know, that like you have a short life. Uh, or lots of sicknesses and things like that because because of the in, not direct but indirect kind of uh, uh, actions negative action that you did so therefore it's kind of a, a certain effect of that's the like a corresponding result result corresponding to the cause because you cut off somebody's like if you killed. Uh, lots of beings and things like that. So therefore, uh, you're, you know, you have this short living, short life, and also lots of kind of uh, uh, illness and things like that. And then uh, uh, the dominant results, uh, for example, this is an example, it's not always like that, but dominant, what is here called dominant uh, result is to be reborn in an ill-fated and unattractive land. So even if you are born in the human realm, you are born in a human realm which has kind of uh, lots of uh, lots of problems, you know, a uh, little bit kind of not beautiful or you know, very arid kind of, or you know, uh, with lots of lots of difficulties and, you know, violence and uh, not nice uh, kind of place. 
because of that. So these kind of, you know, uh, similarly with positive also. So this, this is something which, you know, is uh, talked about here uh, with all kind of positive and negative actions. You have uh, this kind of uh, uh, results. And uh, Uh, here, this looked a wrong view uh, is uh, uh, <laughs> translated as uh, aberrant belief. Uh, I don't know, this is something I never heard before, um, but that doesn't matter, I think. It's just different translations. Uh, so it's a, uh, you know, I think the main things what I wanted to uh, mention today, uh, I think I have more or less mentioned. Uh, if, uh, if I can remember clearly. Uh, so maybe I'll stop here because uh, if any questions from anybody, uh, I will be very happy uh, to to discuss. Uh, J, there was some questions in the chat. Yeah. Um, one, the first one was uh, um, having done negative things when a teenager. Ignoring that they were so negative, what to do now that I recognize their non-virtuous aspect? Being positive. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is the idea, you know. Mm. The first is to recognize that those negative things that we have done is negative. And it is not good. It's not good for me. It's not good for the, you know, uh, if it, if you have affected some other people with that, it's not good. So therefore, uh, you know, you recognize that, and then uh, we try to do as much as possible, more positive, and especially, you know, uh, to do the opposite of what we have been negative things doing, but you know, the opposite of that. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, you know, uh, to generate more, you know, something that would be, uh, that would, you know, uh, what can you say? That would uh, be the opposite of the the emotions or the thoughts that uh, that is uh, created those actions you know because every negative thing that we do uh, is either because of you know any of the negative emotions you know like uh, what we call glaciers uh, either because of ignorance that we are you know we uh, we don't understand and we are kind of wrongly, um, we have a wrong understanding, a wrong view or, you know, something like the ignorance or anger and hatred and things like that, or, uh, you know, uh, kind of greed or too much attachment or something like that, or, you know, envy or, you know, uh, kind of those kind of things. Uh, or, you know, like um, just pride and uh, arrogance and things like that. Uh, either of those, you know, or related with those or many of those together, that's what we, you know, that's creating our, uh, the actions, you know, it's the, the first mental, uh, these mental and emotional causes. So this, the, the opposite is opposite of all these 
negative emotions and you know uh, the uh, what we call uh, the glaciers is two compassion and wisdom you know uh, because the, the, a very very proper and very good compassion and wisdom is the opposite of all this so if we can generate in ourselves uh, these two qualities in us these two experiences uh, that can totally you know like balance it and negate or purify you know uh, any kind of negative actions that we have done that's very important to understand that's the thing uh, so therefore you know that's why it is said you know that to purify negative actions the most most uh, what can you say uh, most strongest is you know is 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 wisdom uh, that's why sometimes you know uh, like for instance you know prajnaparamita sutras are called diamond sutra diamond is something that can cut even the you know any any other thing uh, any other strong matter, matter uh, you can cut with the diamond you know so therefore uh, anything negative you can cut through so that's why you know uh, the strongest is wisdom and next and equally almost strong is the compassion so uh, if we can develop wisdom and compassion in ourselves then that will not only you know purify our negative actions of the past but totally prevent any negative actions in the future uh, because you know all our negative actions are happening because of a ne negative state of mind and if we are you know totally you know uh, become or our mind is filled with wisdom and compassion then there is no no possibility to uh, to make negative uh, karma so that's why uh, it's regarded the most important thing yes so you can you hear me sorry yes uh, now i can hear. yeah thank thank you for this um uh, instructions on the wisdom and compassion when uh, it is possible it is i have two questions one is to it is it, it is normally said that it is possible to purify bad karma from the past to the Vajrasattva practice, Dolce Sempa practice. So mm -hmm. how does this function? That's one thing. And then the other thing, if you can purify bad karma, is it possible to uh, increase good karma from the past, multiply good karma from the past? Uh, the thing is like this, you know, like Vajrasattva practice, uh, is uh, is very you know very strong uh, practice if we do it in a in a uh, it also depends on how we do it no actually uh, how how strong the practice is uh, not just you know that we do that but how how well we do it and how uh, how much understanding and clarity and you know uh, uh, fully uh, we engage in that practice i think that is something very important uh, so say like vajrasattva practice you know vajrasattva practice is not just a recitation of the mantra uh, it is you know uh, it's the whole it's a whole practice with you know uh, first of course the four you know what we call as the uh, four um, uh, four, four, four ways of purification. Uh, all these four ways of purification uh, are, are kind of in the air. Uh, and uh, uh, then, you know, 
there is also you know, meditation in there, like uh, not only shamatha but also you know uh, in the in the in the any vajrayana practice. Actually, there is always shamatha and vipassana. There is always creation and completion. So the completion stage practice is is the wisdom practice. Uh, completion stage practice is wisdom practice, and shamatha is uh, or the you know. Uh, what you call it, the um, uh, creation uh, practice is shamatha, and so, uh, and 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 of course, you know, like if we we visualize ourselves or we you know we allow ourselves to be totally kind of uh, uh, absorbed or become one or become inseparable. Let's say like doesn't matter, you know, uh, uh, only, you know, Vajrasattva, but any Buddhas, uh, then actually what we are trying to do is we are, we are trying to experience as an enlightened being, you know, with, uh, so if I, if you try to visualize myself, for instance, uh, as Vajrasattva, then I, 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 you know, at whatever level I can, I, I try to experience myself as a Vajrasattva or enlightened Buddha. I try to feel like one, I try to, uh, you know, uh, react like one, I try to, you know, I be like one. So, you know, that's the training to be one, enlightened. So that means, uh, experience or try to be as compassionate uh, or more or less compassionate like uh, the Buddha or Vajrasattva and more or less uh, wise or wisdom, the way of seeing like, so that is working on my wisdom and compassion. Yeah. So if that, if you can do that, that is then the, you know, the really the very strong uh, practice, the very strong uh, purification. Uh, and on top of that, then we also have the kind of the, uh, you know, kind of cause and effect again of the, you know, uh, dedications and, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, kind of blessings, you can call it blessings or dedication of, uh, of Buddha, you know, uh, uh, Vajrasattva, whose kind of uh, main activity was to purification. And there are, of course, many different Buddhas of purification, but like that. Of course, all Buddhas have that, but some have more and less, more because it's, uh, you know, the dedication is theirs. So that's also a part of the, you know, uh, Tendale um, uh, interdependence. So this, this is, this is uh, the thing. Uh, now, you know, if you say that, you know, to, uh, to change the past, uh, it's not, you know, you, I think it's not, you can't really change the past because change the past is not there anymore. It's gone. Only its effect is there. Uh, so therefore, you know, uh, if, you, if you change now, uh, that will change the effect of the past. Uh, so therefore, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, you don't go back to the past and change it. You cannot really go back to the past because the past is not there anymore. But, you know, if you change now, then it will change the future. I think that's the idea. And then the, the, the second question to, if you can purify, karma, you can also multiply good karma? Yeah, uh, if, if you have purified the, the, the bad karma or negative karma, uh, then uh, your natural, natural positive, you know, the, actually it's a little bit like this from Buddhist point of view. Um, we only have, you know, like, uh, 
if we purify the negative, then the positive is already there within us, you know. Mm. Uh, so therefore, anything positive you do, it actually helps us to purify the negative one. Positive is naturally is. So therefore, you know, we always talk about, you know, uh, uh, sometimes it's it's also written there, you know, like, uh, uh, um, we say it like, uh, uh, accumulated and existing positive karmas or, you know, remaining or, uh, you know, so we all have all the positive, uh, not karma, but positive nature. You know, the Buddha nature is there with all its, uh, you know, natural qualities. Uh, so therefore, uh, we don't have to get something new in it. We, we already have that. Uh, so that's why, you know, the, the image is that uh, as it is very clearly mentioned in the, uh, you know, uh, the Jurlama, uh, uh, what is it called, the Anuttara Tantra Shastra, uh, that uh, the, the book called Buddha Nature sometimes. Uh, it is said that like, uh, it's like, uh, um, like a, a golden image. Uh, you know, wrapped uh, in a rag. Uh, so, you know, we are like that, you know. Uh, if a golden image uh, is, you know, is somewhere in a corner of the room, ragged, you know, it's kind of uh, wrapped around it with lots of dirty clothes and things like that. Uh, so, we see it as then we don't like, you know, we don't care for it. It's kind of useless, something like that. But if that uh, that wrap of old clothes is is taken out, then it's golden, you know, it's already golden, you know, image. And it's shining and it's valuable and it's, uh, we don't have to do anything to make it better. Uh, so in the same way, you know, uh, the way we actually are in our true nature uh, is like that. But it's because of our wrong way of seeing, because we cannot understand ourselves. We cannot, uh, you know, uh, experience the way we truly are, because we have wrong way of seeing and wrong, you know, lots of, uh, you know, what can you say? Uh, lots of um, uh, mistaken views and, you know, uh, misunderstandings and, you know, uh, wrong way of, uh, wrong attitude and things like that. So therefore, it's like, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the main thing is our negative uh, views and, you know, okay, so the ignorance. So as, as long as, as soon as that's cleared, then it's already there, you know, all the faucet, you know, so therefore no, not necessary to, to do anything. So therefore, uh, that's why, you know, it is said, Dila Sarja Chiyo me Yaprishava Chosin, Yonda Nyela Yonda Ta, Yonda Tona Tovar, you know, there is nothing to, to, to actually get rid of uh, in its true nature. There's nothing to get rid of. It's already, you know, perfect, like the golden Buddha image. Uh, and there's nothing that you need to add to it. You don't need to bring something and, you know, make it full or make it, you know, better or make it, you know, uh, make, it, make it more kind of uh, uh, developed. Uh, you, you just look you look at it in the right way, you know. It's perfect, and the, and if you can see it in a perfect way, and if you can see it in the perfect way as it is, then you are naturally, uh, you know, uh, liberated. That's how it is said. So this is a little bit like that. And the the, the greatest purification is that to see the 
the way we totally are, usually in, in, in our natural way, that's the, the greatest purification. So therefore, you know, uh, sometimes we say self-liberate, you know, the self-liberated, you know, this is, you know, the Vajrayana way of self-liberated, you know, it's, it's, you don't have to do anything actually just to be able to truly, completely understand and, you know, experience that the way it is without any kind of um, um, delusions or illusions or, you know, uh, wrong views. That's the idea. You know? Thank you, Rupert. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Rinpoche, for the teaching. Uh, I, I, I was wondering, actually, when I'm listening, actually, to what you said and the questions, it's like karma is become sometimes too much uh, related to the past, and we are all the time trying to to deal with the past, the bad, uh, you know, the negative things we have done in the past, and how to purify, how to good. It's like we are creating. For me, it was like you know, um, trying to react to something which was which happened in the past, and probably it's also creating negative thoughts again and putting again reactions because we we don't know what was in the past but we are trying to re revive it and to 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 come up bring it again to the present and to deal with that to react to that uh, and uh, i think you explained that uh, I, I was i was uh, thinking during this uh, this conversation that it's too much actually of judgment still. It's like we are thinking that we are still judged by a mighty being and we are trying to kind of battle with what we have done in the past and not to think to be in the present. And you said actually that if you start to say, okay, the past is the past. And if I start from now to be conscious of what I'm doing, what, I, what are my acts? and to be stable in our mind, this is the karma, probably. This is this, the start this is now. Practice. Yes, that is the practice. That is the practice. Of course, we have, you know, the way I am, or the way you are, is because of the past, no? Okay. The past created us. You know, the, the way the, I, I, I have been through all the, you know, uh, what I did and what happened to me and, you know, all these things uh, has made me what I am now, the way I am and the way I feel and the way I react and, you know, the way my habits are and the, my, the way I'm my kind of uh, uh, how I see and how I react, everything is because of that. So uh, I am created by my past. Uh, now, what I have to do is you know, it's, you know, I cannot fight with the past. I cannot go back and purify my past. I can only, you know, understand and uh, try to transform my, my present. Uh, the more I try to understand what is right and what is wrong and what is positive and is not positive and what is, you know, and then I try to, you know, uh, train in that way. That's the training. Uh, that is going to change my future. Because the more I, you know, see things clearly, the more I, uh, you know, become better, the more I become more positive, the more positive I will become. And then, so that's the whole thing. You know, that, that's the practice. What we call practice is this training, you know, uh, to try to see things rightly, clearly, and then try to a little bit, you know, uh, not totally taken over by my habitual tendencies and my habitual, you know, um, reactions and things like that. So whenever I have, a, you know, uh, I first understand what is, what kind of thoughts and emotions and actions 
are you know, negative or virtuous or unvirtuous or you know positive and negative and then when i start to you know uh, function or i start to react with my negative ways then i say that's not the right way this i should not you know i try to kind of slowly you know be more mindful and not you know not totally taken over by that and then try to focus more on positive side and if i can do that that's the practice that's the that's the you know process of changing and process of transformation that's the practice thank you yeah. um Rinpoche, there's another question in the chat okay uh um i translate so if if someone uh as a good karma is it possible that in their future life they can evolve in the negative way again you know actually when you say that you are you know you are you are creating positive karma that means you are creating positive you know Uh, habitual tendencies yeah so if you are creating positive you know uh, habitual tendencies then it is likely that uh, you will become more positive or you know uh, things like that uh, but uh, you know if there is some some very kind of uh, hidden uh, Ne- negative thing is there and then all negative things come together because of certain causes and conditions then maybe you can also become more negative you know this is uh, not impossible uh, but you know this is the you know that's why we always dedicate and pray and you know and that these things don't happen no mm-hmm. Yes, and another one. Um, Rinpoche, how can we help uh, babies to be delivered uh, from the negative karma from the birth onwards? Sometimes birth can be a very traumatic experience for baby. Yes, uh, usually, <laughs> usually, you know, uh, it is said that, you know, Uh, birth and death can be very very uh, traumatic and uh, of course depends on person to person and situation to situation but uh, could be traumatic uh, but there you know uh, i think the what we can do to help is you know of course we can we can make the birth as easy as possible or as you know as comfortable as possible and as you know things like that but uh, i don't know how much we can do that uh, so usually you know uh, it's yeah whatever we can do we can do how much it helps i think depends on the person and all the you know causes and conditions so we cannot we cannot understand all the causes and conditions fully you know at this moment because you know it's not easy because there are so many causes and so many conditions and things like that uh, but as you know we can do what we can do is uh, just doing that you know to make it as as positive as as comfortable as nice you know and of course you know like babies and things like that you know sometimes uh, they say that you know uh, the babies can feel uh, what you feel you know uh, like a mother of you know, maybe even father and people around uh, so if we are you know really uh, kind and compassionate and you know really uh, with lots of positive thoughts maybe that is something that could be you know uh, felt also you know uh, it is possible uh, sometimes we talk about you know that if you do some that's 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 the i think one of the main things 
about the prayer also, you know, when you do pray for somebody, because then, you know, we are trying to create a very good, you know, thoughts and wishes and, you know, uh, you know, uh, make kind of a, a positive energy and that, you know, it's, so, you know, uh, I don't know how much we can do, but it depends on uh, situation to situation, but, you know, uh, we can do whatever we can, but then we cannot totally change somebody because of, you know, because then, uh, you know, uh, that karma is not that person's karma, but, you know, something else, you know. Uh, Another question? Yes. Um, to cut the root of kleshas, is that the realization of selflessness? Would you yes. say that uh, would you say that until we go beyond duality, the result of our actions will be magnified, and as we progress towards enlightenment, the effect of karma becomes smaller and smaller. Yes. Uh... Uh, yes, you can say, maybe you can say that, you know, or uh, more and more, uh, more positive, you know. Uh, and then another question, uh, why is the third type of activity not translated as neutral? Because it's not neutral. It's not neutral. It's actually positive. It's positive, but it's not actually action in a way, not too much of an activity. It's a, it's a state of mind or a state of being. Uh, it's, a, it's a meditative state, more or less, you know, so that's why uh, it's not neutral. It's positive, actually. And Rupert could you develop on wisdom, what wisdom is, the notion of wisdom? Uh, the, the wisdom is to, you know, to, to be able to see or understand and experience things clearly as it really is, you know, uh, basically. So, uh, you know, uh, that's what wisdom is usually, no? I mean, uh, that you know. You know what, what things, what, how things are and what to do in, in that situation and how to face anything that is happening. Uh, so you have a kind of answer to anything that happens, then you have the wisdom, no? The wise person is somebody who, who, who knows how to, how to deal with any situation, yeah? Um, I don't know if Luigi can hear us, but I'm not quite sure how to understand your, your question. Maybe you could uh, ask your question verbally yourself. Luigi? Uh, yes, I just tried. Um, my question was uh, thinking about the, the karma, if I understood well. Uh, I have the experience as a teacher. So uh, when I have, uh, I have uh, uh, given uh, an assessment to our students, from my point of view, it is impo more important the final results of the students. And uh, it is not important if the students get their, that results studying uh, the last night or during uh, all the year. So I was just wondering uh, if uh, this is something that uh, it is comparable to the, to the karma. I don't know if I'm uh, clear enough. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, whether that's, uh, you know, in karma, usually it is said like this, you know, 
uh, it's not really a kind of a, a test. Uh, the karma is the whole situation, no? all the way you are. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, we talk about this. Uh, I think I think I need to mention this, you know, what, what we call them, Pejitli and Zojitli. Um, I don't know how it's translated here. Mm. You know, say like, So, like how you usually do things, you know, if you are usually doing in a certain way, you know, say like whole life you have been in a, is doing in a certain way and you are doing, you know, uh, say like not very good or not very nicely or a little bit, you know, negative kind of, not too negative, but a little bit negative way. And at the end of your life, or, you know, just before, you know, uh, you did something really positive, strongly positive, you know. Uh, then it is said, you know, from Buddhist point of view, that thing that you did most strongly and most recently becomes most effective. Uh, so therefore, that will kind of, uh, even if you have, you know, you have kind of created causes and conditions uh, for a much worse situation in your, say, like next life, uh, but your very strong positive action and positive situation at the, in the last stage uh, can overtake it, and then you can be born into a very positive life. Uh, but that doesn't mean that that you know all these things that you have been doing in neg neg negative thing is not totally nullified, but you know it's kind of pushed back, kind of you know. And then in the next life, you keep on doing these positive things. Then that negative actions of the past go you know kind of weaker and weaker, or push more and more back, and you know uh, then you know. Maybe at, at a certain stage, it can be totally purified and things like that. So I don't know if that is similar to what your question or not. I don't know, but uh, yes. But of course, if you study, you know, if you study overnight or if you study yesterday or day before yesterday or, uh, you know, in the beginning, if you know the result, if you know the answer, or if you know the subject, then it's a uh, it's okay, no. It's uh, it doesn't matter when you study it or how you study. It. No. Bye bye. Sorry, I don't have any question. I, my, my hand was already raised. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That was there was a question from Catherine, but she's not there now, I think. Mm. No. Okay. Oh uh, uh, there's a question from Teresa. She says, uh, my daughter wants to know to ask you why life is so complicated. She's only twelve years old, but very <laughs> smart. Yes. <laughs> how can I explain to her and how do you uh, have a message of hope for teenagers today? <laughs> uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, life is a little bit complicated. <laughs> yes, life is complicated. Life is not on the, uh, uh, you know, a bed of roses, but there are also good things and there are also bad things. And, uh, uh, you know, it also depends a lot where you focus your mind, you know, uh, because, you know, there's everything is there, you know, there's problems, there's nice things, there's bad things, there's uh, all kinds of different things, interesting things, and, you know, and good people and not good people and bad people and very good people, all these things are there in 
uh, in the world. Uh, I think if we learned, uh, if we knew this, I think this is important to know that the world is like this. There are lots of problems. There are lots of difficulties. There are lots of negative things. There's lots of problems. There's lots of negative emotions. There are lots of, you know, all these things, you know, negative and positive, both and lots of negative also. And it's very important to understand this and accept this because otherwise you will be expecting something very, very nice and everything great. And then, you, you get, you know, frustrated by that, and that's not good. But you also have these positive things, you know, this is also, you cannot deny that. There are lots of positive things. So what we need to do is, we, we need to know that there are all lots of negative things and you know, bad things and problems, but also there are very good things and positive things. So if we can focus ourselves on these positive things, and, you know, uh, however much negative they are, if I, or you know, if she would work on this positive side and then concentrate on that and focus on that and, you know, uh, with that environment, in that environment or in that situation, then I think the world will be also could be good and positive and, you know, uh, and she can, she can create a positive world for herself uh, also. So I think that is important. Another question from Ursel. Um, isn't the goal to stop creating karma altogether? Isn't it said by Chandra Kirti in the Madhyamika that the idiot commits bad actions and goes to hell, and the idiot commits good action and goes to heaven, but the wise person does neither? <laughs> <laughs> now this is, you know, I think uh, uh, if you go to heaven and do the wise one also, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so when Rinpoche speaks about seeing things the way they are, um, does it mean that circumstances are only the results of causes and condition? Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm not sure what it means. Stefan, can you uh, explain your question? Hello? <laughs> Hello, Stefan? Oui, sorry, je suis là, je suis là. Excuse-moi, C'est quoi ta question? Oui, ben c'est un peu ce que tu as demandé hein, quand, on dit, euh, quand on dit que les choses sont telles qu'elles sont. Oui. Enfin, de, de les voir telles qu'elles sont, est-ce que c'est euh, ben est voir que ce qui, ce qui arrive est en quelque sorte le, le karma de tout un chacun hein, J'ai entendu souvent dire qu'il y a un karma individuel et un karma commun. Oui. Et que toutes ces choses-là se, ouais, se mettent à jour pour que les choses évoluent dans un sens ou dans l'autre. Et donc la question, c'est quoi au juste Est-ce que c'est est ça la, le fait de voir Est-ce que c'est est comme ça que les choses sont, sont... Uh -huh. Donc les choses, euh, est-ce que les... Euh, donc les, tu dis qu'il y a des gens qui ont un karma individuel et puis il y a un karma collectif et... Et que les... Euh, en fait les choses ne sont que, que ce... ce ne se produisent que par rapport à ce jeu de, de causes et de conditions individuelles et communs. Uh -huh. So Rinpoche, um, Stefan says uh, that he understands that, uh, that there is a, a individual karma that people have, and then there is a collective karma that uh, kind of connects uh, individual karmas of different people. 
And so everything happens just because of the interaction of this individual and collective karma. Is that the correct way of seeing things? Uh, actually, it's more or less. It's it's it's. I think uh, uh, what we. I think from Buddhist point of view, it's. Uh, it's the individual karma which is uh, which is creating the collect collective karma also because you know uh, like each 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 people you know who have their own negative positive or negative or whatever different kind of karma uh, and those people who have this certain similar uh, type of karma then they are kind of they come in a one place or in a, in a they, they 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 kind of arrive in the same situation or same you know environment or same place uh, so it's not that you know they did something together of course sometimes they could do something together also but not necessarily that if you know all of us for instance you know uh, we are together here and we are talking to each other and we can see each other because we have a similar karma. If we didn't have similar karma, we would not even be able to see each other. You know, we would not be able to be in the same place and we would not be able to have the kind of uh, same uh, world and same kind of situation going through. So that's, you know, that's the what we call the collective karma is not that you know uh, we all necessarily did something together but we have the similar uh, in many different ways similar kind of karmic conditions so that we are you know we are all human beings we have the same kind of brain we have the same kind of eyes you know we have the same kind of faculties so you know we can we can communicate indicate each other you know all this is you know uh, called the uh, the collective karma i think